BS7593-2019 is an advisory or best practice document. There are some changes that have just come into effect as part of British standards under Part L. Ultimately, what this means is what is currently a, an advisory document, it will now become mandatory. And part of that, I don't know when this is going to be, it might be 2022, it might be 2025. But part of that is going to be mandatory annual water checks of central heating systems. So this video is a resource of how to do it because it's going to be mandatory soon enough. Certain things are also coming into it, which I personally disagree with. One of them is that uh, we need a filter, some kind of magnetic filter, to be able to catch debris within the system. My argument would be the deaerator is much more important than a filter because a filter deals with the symptoms of a problem rather than actually addressing the problem in the first place. And the second part that I also disagree with is that every five years, you have to redose with inhibitor. If we're working to VDR 2035, then you don't need inhibitor. So certain companies like Wiesmann suggest or recommend that you don't use system inhibitor. Therefore, why would you have to top up the inhibitor? Makes no sense. That's the piece that's under review now and will likely be mandatory. Every five years, we have to do a drain down, a chemical clean, and then top up again with inhibitor. Hardness measures scale in water, magnesium, calcium. Depending where you are in the country, like Wales, for example, will probably have very low hardness, whereas places like London, much harder. Uh, where I live in Chiswick, W4, my levels are around the 240 to 260 parts per million. Anything more than 300 parts per million, they say is not acceptable for central heating systems. So you need to use demineralized water, maybe mix it with softened water, or put some kind of scale filter, scale reducer on the system to bring that number down. Iron is an indicator that the system is already corroding. Corrosion is taking place. This is basically the inside of your radiators are being eaten because of high oxygen and or high conductivity, electrical conductivity. Power flush is required to remove it and balance the water. We're looking for low electrical conductivity, which is the next part. My particular TDS meter or conductivity meter has three functions on it. Uh, electrical conductivity, 
TDS, which is total dissolved solids, and salts. Electrical conductivity is a, is a measurement of how well electrons pass through water. A very high number means the electrons can pass very easily, which is a problem for the systems. And a very low number means it's more difficult for the electrons to pass through water, therefore reducing the chance of corrosion. VDI 2035 suggests a figure of up to 1,500 1, microsiemens be an acceptable number, providing you have very low oxygen. It's a, it's a balancing act between oxygen and electrical conductivity. If these numbers are both high, you end up with a lot of corrosion. If they're both low, you end up with zero corrosion or next to zero corrosion. Ideally, we want the microsiemens number to be at least 100 microsiemens less than the mains water. So if your mains is say 500, you want your microsiemens number to be 400 or lower. In an ideal world, we'll have the microsiemens uh, under 100, maybe 80. The next number that we test for is TDS, total dissolved solids. Total dissolved solids is a measurement of salts, minerals, scale and iron within the system. You should test both the mains and the system and ideally after just completing a power flush or while you're actually doing a power flush you should be taking regular measurements of the water. If you find the system TDS is higher than the mains then you need to continue flushing. So these numbers should be the same. A higher TDS number is also an indicator of possible flux residue or cleanser still being left in the system. Either way, you should still continue to flush until these numbers are the same. The salts part of it is an extension really of the, of the TDS, minerals as opposed to just floating debris. The salts is measured in cations and anions, which are positively and negatively charged ions, which are naturally found in water. If they're in very high doses, then it can be problematic for the system. So as long as your TDS is the same as the mains and salts is the same as the mains, you're good to go. If then they're higher, then it requires a, uh, a power flush. pH. pH is a scale of 1 to 14, 7 being the middle, neutral. Anything below 7 is acidic, anything above 7 is alkaline. Central heating systems like it a little bit alkaline. So anything between 8.2 and 8.5 is a nice figure for systems with aluminium or aluminium heat exchangers. Um, some companies, I believe Whistler Bosch, stipulate a pH of 8, which is a bit low. 8, 8.2, 8.5, good for aluminium. For stainless steel heat exchangers, you can go all the way up to 10. So between 8.5 and 10 is a nice figure to be looking at. Anything outside of these figures, you need to be looking at why and seeing what you can do to resolve that issue, either by draining down, refilling, or using inhibitor, which does bring the pH down to values which the system can tolerate. If you're testing for system inhibitor, the main ingredient that most of the tests test for is called molybdate. Most of the big names, most of the big players in the chemical market use this uh, chemical, and that's the generic tests, tests for molybdate. I, I personally really disagree with using chemicals, mostly because we've been using them for 30, 40 years in the UK, and we still have major corrosion issues. So whether people have not been topping up properly or whether they've been overdosing it. If you overdose it, which they say, some companies say, you can't overdose it, but you actually can. Um, some of the really old stuff used to be quite corrosive to the rubbers and uh, O-rings within the system um, and expansion vessels. Uh, if we can do without chemicals, as far as I'm concerned, the better. But a lot of manufacturers insist upon it, and if you don't do it, then you run the risk of invalidating any warranties. And of course, as soon as that warranty is expired, then you're free to do whatever you want and use the mineralized water without fear of losing the, the, the warranty. 
Um, some manufacturers actually do not recommend that you use system inhibitor in a sealed system. So make of that what you will, very confusing. Magnetite is iron filings and rust within the system. It's a, it's a sign that corrosion has occurred or, or is still occurring. The magnetic filter will catch some of this. It shows there's a problem and you need to deal with the cause of the problem as opposed to trying to just catch it and throw inhibitor at it. A power flush is invariably required and then control the, the new water that's gone into it. Ideally, either by VDR 2035, which is demineralized water, or by adding inhibitor, depending on the boiler manufacturer that you're um, installing. So VDI 2035 is a German standard or protocol, roughly equivalent to our British standard 7593 2019, to do with system water quality and testing. So it's not just about filling the system with demineralized water, it's about the whole process, which includes regular monitoring of the water, testing of the water, checking things like iron, TDS, uh, electrical conductivity, salts, pH. Regular monitoring is the key. A lot of people use uh, what they call turbidity tubes. It's basically a, a tube, looks like a test tube, and when you look down the length of the tube at the bottom is either an X or a, some kind of symbol that you can see to see how clear the water is. So when you take a main sample, you look down the tube and you'll be able to see the cross at the bottom of the tube quite clearly, it shows the water's clean. You do the same with system water, and if you hold it up in a jam jar, for example, and have a look, you think, oh, okay, that water's pretty clean. But then you look through this turbidity tube and you see you can't see the cross. So although it looks clean when you hold it up to the light, when you look through this tube, you, you can't see the cross. It actually shows you there's some debris in the system, uh, rust, magnetite, TDS, whatever it be. It's an indicator that you need to look further. Equally, you can actually look down the turbidity tube and see the cross and you think, okay, everything's clear. Don't need to do a flush. But when you do these tests, you actually find there's high iron content or the electrical conductivity number is very high. TDS number is higher than the mains. It's not a very reliable method of judging whether a system needs flushing or not. Thanks for watching.